Hey everybody, welcome back to the Starfront Remote Observatories, plural, keyword plural, <laughs> <laughs> observatories, because there's not just one, there's <laughs> multiple, two of them, <laughs> and there will be a lot more coming soon. But it's been a month since we last filmed an update video, so Josh and I are out here to let you know uh, how things have been going down and what our plans are for the short-term future. So our, your demand has been honestly uh, way more than we had previously expected. And uh, as such, we're going to need to rapidly expand out here. So yeah. So um, first of all, just thank you guys. Um, thank you everyone so much for for the overwhelming support. Um, whether it's you know uh, joining us out here as a customer or kind words of support, um, encouraging us uh, to continue to pursue our mission of making dark skies um, and dark sky remote imaging affordable and accessible to more and more people. And so. Um, thanks to the overwhelming support, uh, we're excited to announce that we will be expanding to our next uh, two observatories uh, in the very uh, short future here. Um, we're, we're planning exactly what that timeline and build will look like, but we are extremely uh, excited to make that announcement and also to let people know that if you are interested in learning more about kind of how you guys can engage with Starfront Observatories and learn more about what we're doing um, and also our very active community on Discord, um, just hop on our website, starfront.space. Uh, there's a very quick link to, to join our Discord, as well as a lot of in additional information that we've been posting over the past weeks and months about how you can get started or how you can level up your imaging. Um, and we would love to continue that conversation with you and, and hopefully get you guys out here. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, the one thing everyone has is a lot of questions because a lot of you are new to remote imaging and you may not be aware of what's needed or how to get started, but just send us an email and we'll get you all sorted and uh, installed out here. It's a great time. We have now uh, 31 peers installed. And so every night these buildings are now super active. There's a ton of people in the Discord imaging every single night. And it's a cool little virtual star party every single day. <laughs> and uh, we're excited to have you out here. I can barely go to sleep. I just stay up all <laughs> night because it's, uh, it's too much fun. How many, how many clear, clear skies in the past? stretch here <laughs> we've had maybe five cloudy nights in the last month and a half it's been pretty great and tonight is uh gonna be no exception so i'm gonna be staying up all night tonight <laughs> and filming and shooting well we're excited uh once again um please visit our website starfront.space uh you know and please don't hesitate to reach out we love having conversations with new customers and just people who are supportive of of our cause and so we look forward to speaking with you and clear skies all right, so it is officially nighttime out and it is quite dark. I must say that uh, if my footage here looks super grainy, out of focus or noisy, it's because it's pitch black out here. I'm actually filming with probably the best low light camera that you can shoot with, which is the Sony a7S III. And even out here, uh, it struggles to pick up any signal because it's just so pitch black outside that uh, it still looks noisy, even though. So anyways, I'm walking out to the observatory right now and I'm gonna show you what's going on, what kind of action is going on inside of the observatory. Like I said, we're doing a, uh, a little collaborative project. And these are our two roll off roof buildings with the Milky Way in the background. And as I walk in and open this door, you're gonna see a building with a lot of telescopes in it and they are all running. It is gonna to be tough to see what's going on in here again because it's just pitch black. And I've covered up many of these things with uh, electrical tape, so you can't actually see beyond the lights. But there's a lot of active telescopes in this building. Everyone is taking photos. And uh, many of the people in here are actually taking photos of the same thing because we are actually working on a collaborative project at the observatory. So you can see here, there's one, two, three, four, down there, five, six. We've got six telescopes all locked in at the same spot in the night sky, and we're all just firing away at it. So this is what the inside of the observatory looks like. It's just a building where the roof comes off and it's full of a bunch of telescopes. Anyway, so building one, over here holds most of our smaller telescopes, but building two has the larger systems at our observatory. So here we are in building two, 
and this building is definitely starting to take shape. I've been working on telescopes in here a lot lately, also working on the collaborative project, a plane wave. There's a Galactic Hunters telescope and there is a big old AGO. Now I have to watch my step in here because it is pitch black, but this building is starting to become chock full of different SCTs. So there's a C11, C9 and a quarter, and in the back we've got another C11 and a Mac Newt. Oh, and there is of course a refractor and a Sharp Star SCA250. Anyways, all nerdy stuff. So back in May, this was just an empty field out here in Central Texas. And what we've built here is a remote observatory. Now what a remote observatory is, is a place where people can host their telescopes to do astronomy or astrophotography remotely from a dark sky site and be able to do it every single night that it's clear in an amazing location to do it. So the inspiration behind this is the fact that the way people do astronomy and astrophotography is inextricably linked to where we live. You can only do this from a dark sky site. It is the only way that it works. It's the only way to do it consistently and well. But the problem is that not everyone lives in a place that's super dark. Most people live in cities and most people have lives, unlike me. <coughs> so they can't live out here in these dark conditions 24 seven. Not to mention this, many people don't even own a home with a backyard to where they could set up a telescope and leave it to go and do photos for the whole night. There's all these hurdles and barriers and issues that the average person has to jump through in order to actually engage in astrophotography, which is this amazing passion that we all love so much. What ends up happening is that in order for people to actually use their telescopes, engage in astronomy, do astrophotography, you have to drive many hours to a place that's dark. And what comes with this is you deal with the cost of driving, you need a car, you need a place to camp. You need to fiddle with your gear and technical issues. You might get clouds and all that driving was wasted time. And I'm no stranger to dealing with all of these problems because this is how I used to do all of my astrophotography is just driving and shooting. But what happens is because of all these hurdles, people slowly fall out of love with astronomy and astrophotography because it's just too difficult to do. It costs too much and the headache is too great. So what happens is most people leave their telescopes at home, they sit in their closet, and they have all this expensive telescope gear that simply can't get used, and people forget this wonderful thing that we all love, which is astrophotography. There is a solution to this problem. The solution is remote observatories, just like this, where the roof rolls off and people can use their telescopes and shoot. But the problem historically has been, it's just too darn expensive. Uh, for the average person, the average astrophotographer, people can't afford to spend that much per month to host a remote telescope. Our theory was that there are an unknown large amount of people that would love to be able to host a remote telescope to engage in astrophotography and the things they love more often, if only it was more affordable. And this was the idea behind Starfront, to make these wonderful sky conditions actually affordable or more affordable to the average astrophotographer. And this is what we set out to do. In the month of May, we built these two buildings. And then in the months of June, and now we're in July, we've since installed 30 telescope systems and they are all up and running and taking photos. And it's been an incredible transformation and things are happening that have turned out so much cooler that I wouldn't have expected happening. For example, our Discord. So I think one of the common complaints about remote imaging is that in a way, because you're not in person with your telescope, is that you're lacking some experience of being out with your system. And one of the things I've also missed about the remote observing experience and the way I've engaged with it in the past is that there's not very much community, there's not engagement, I really love star parties. I enjoy hanging out with all my friends and shooting together and just having a ball um, <laughs> with our telescopes out in the desert. And this is great, but it's not something that we could reasonably do every single night. You know, 
we, we have lives. We can't all just drive out into the desert every single night. But what's happened here in this remote observatory is what we did is we started a Discord channel very early on <clears throat> so that our customers could discuss gear and help answer each other's questions. And what it's morphed into is slowly, every single night is like a virtual star party where everyone is all running their telescopes together. We're sharing our subs, we're talking, we're just chatting, sharing memes, having a great time. And it's honestly been the most fun part of this whole experience. I'm excited every day to wake up, to work on these telescopes and in the nights to just have a blast with everyone and uh, do a little bit of imaging together. It's so much fun. It's like, it's insane. The Discord is out of control. So <laughs> I highly recommend checking out our Discord. It's a really fun virtual star party that's happening every night. And I think that that's what's so exciting about this compared to, um, you know, what people have experienced in remote observatories in the past because we're getting the average astrophotographer, we're getting people that are just so passionate about wanting to do astronomy and astrophotography every night that they're just all engaged in this wonderful community and uh, it's, it's an absolute blast. <laughs> Here's the other cool thing that I'm even so much more excited about is having this community and all this interest means that together we can actually collaborate with our telescopes. So another misconception about remote observing is that you can't really do that much with a small telescope. Like you have to have a big giant observatory telescope with premium gear to be able to uh, make the most of a remote experience like this, but it's actually totally not true. Uh, while we do have some large telescope systems here, you can do honestly more things with a small wide field refractor than you can a long focal length system. And this is something that's become a huge radical shift in astrophotography in the last year or two by things like what my, my good friend Marcel Drexler and Xavier Strautner have done and Jan Sainty. All of their images of these low surface brightness things that require tons of exposure time can only be done with a small telescope. A really powerful example of community collaboration is my friend Tim with the Deep Sky Collective and the New Horizons uh, project. Tim is able to get together all of these telescopes at once and together people can collaborate with their average telescopes to produce amazing results that can reveal new things about the universe. And this is what's so exciting to me about a remote observatory where people have wide field telescopes like this is because there's so much you can do together and not separately, especially when you have this community of everyone together under great skies. A lot can be done. You can reveal new things. You can do science with telescopes. And it's really exciting because that's actually what we're doing right now. Um, I can't tell you about our project yet because we're still working on it. But currently we have, I think, six or seven different telescopes here at the observatory running on a very interesting nebula that hasn't been shot before. And so that's the power. Um, together we can create one virtual telescope by collaboration. Of course, you don't have to collaborate if you don't want to, but man, isn't it exciting to have a community where that's possible? It's really, really great. Um, and I'm actually inside the observatory right now on the observatory floor in building one where all these telescopes are currently running on the project. So one thing I'm sure a lot of people are really curious about is How's the astrophotography from out here? Are the pictures any good? The proof's in the pudding. So I'll show you guys a couple of images. We've just been going crazy on projects. I've been shooting dark nebula. I've been doing supernova remnants, galaxies, emission nebulas. Our customers have been going absolutely crazy, uh, just shooting all kinds of things. Yeah, it's been wonderful. Right now we're working on, again, like I said, our collaborative project and with the six or seven scopes we have, we capture, you know, about 30 to 40 hours of data per night. So we're gonna be running that up for a number of days and uh, working on making some great images. But the sky conditions out here are um, safe to say they're world-class. I've been to a lot of places. Uh, I grew up in Arizona. I've shot from a number of remote observatories. I've been to Chile. I've seen 
the night sky from Sarah Tololo Observatory, where they have, you know, giant meter class telescopes. It's good out here. It's, it's incredibly good. There are no light domes at all, except for one in the northeast that is very small. It's pitch black and it's honestly disorienting to step outside of my RV out here, guys. It is, it's crazy dark. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go take some photos of uh, our customers' telescopes now with the Milky Way. I like customers to have images of their scopes running under the dark skies because that's honestly the coolest thing you can have is a photo of your scope in action. That's one thing that a lot of people miss not having their telescope at home. So I'm gonna go around and take photos of everyone's scopes so that they can feel closer to their stuff and see it in action. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this update and if you wanna get involved in this community or you're interested in getting a peer for your telescope, we've actually lowered our prices for the smallest telescopes. So we're trying to make it even more affordable for the average astrophotographer. We're not trying to raise prices, we're trying to go lower to make it available to the masses. So if you're interested in any of that, do check out our website, starfront.space. And uh, I'm gonna go do some stargazing and take some photos. I'll catch you all in the next one.